with just four weeks to go until the American presidential election, both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris teams are stepping up their media tours in a myriad of different ways. Solange Mujan is with me in the studio to discuss this. Solange, you're starting with the publication of Melania Trump's books. It's coming out today and it's certainly made a few headlines, hasn't it? It has. The timing of this self-titled Melania uh, book is noteworthy and it begs the question, is this book being used as a political tool? Many critics say yes, that that is quite obvious. Now, the New York Times noted that the former First Lady's grievances and views in the book, quote, sound a lot like her husband's, only dressed up in couture. She paints a romantic a portrait of their marriage uh, and supports Trump in his anti-media and stolen election rhetoric. There is a notable exception, though, and that has been making headlines uh, and creating much of the buzz needed to sell the $40 book, and that is Melania's uh, view, Melania Trump's views on abortion. While her husband uh, pointed three Supreme Court justices that reversed the federal right to abortion, or Roe v. Wade, and whilst her husband counts heavily on the ultra-conservative and anti-abortion right, Mrs. Trump says that she is pro-choice. I believe in uh, individual freedom. I want to decide what I want to do with my body. I think uh, I don't want government in my personal business. So what then is Melania Trump and by extension the Trump campaign doing here? Why run the risk of alienating many of their voters? Well, some analysts believe that the move shows how big the abortion issue is with this election. The Trump team fears that it could cost him much of, uh, needed much of the women's vote. Uh, over 70, set, over 60 percent of Americans are in favor of the right to abortion in most or all cases. That is according to a Pew poll. So having Melania Trump express her pro choice views, it could essentially sidestep, they say, the anger over the bans and bring women voters to the Trump camp. As for alienating pro-lifers, well, J.D. Vance, the VP uh, candidate, responded to Melania Trump's uh, views, saying that, quote, she is a smart woman, but that it doesn't change their policy stances. In essence, it could be an example of say one thing, appease, and then do what you want. Uh, all the while creating a buzz for the book and bringing in money. CNN says that they refused the demands of Melania Trump's uh, publisher for a payment of $250,000 for an interview on the book. On the book, uh, she went with Fox instead. And Solange, sticking with the issue of abortion, which is certainly right up there with the economy, um, Kamala Harris's team has also been working very hard to try and convince female voters. Yeah, Harris is on a full-fledged media tour, which could be interpreted uh, as her campaign worrying that they need to do more to get her out there. Or it could simply be seen as a normal final sprint. But the choices of who and where she does these interviews is quite interesting. Rather than the traditional route of political shows or newspaper interviews, she went on the sex and relationship podcast Call Her Daddy, which personally I didn't know about. It shows my age. Um, but it is the second most listened to podcast after the Joe Rogan experience. Its target audience is young women. So she talked about abortion and abortion rights on it. Uh, and before that, she also went on a basketball podcast. She did a small town, uh, a, a town hall uh, with Oprah Winfrey. She also gave an interview to the longstanding uh, 60 Minutes TV show, uh, a more traditional outlet where she spoke to some of the show's potentially older uh, and potentially gun-carrying voters. I have a Glock and um, I've had it for quite some time. And um, I mean, Look, Bill, my background is in law enforcement. And um, so there you go. Have you uh, ever fired it? Yes. <laughs> of course I have. <laughs> At a shooting range? Yes, of course I have. Now, today, on Tuesday alone, Harris is expected to appear on The View, The Howard Stern Show, The Late Show, and then on Thursday, she's having a Univision town hall. All of these interviews inter illustrate that a shift by the Harris campaign. They're doing more unscripted TV. Many of them are softer, friendlier interviews, and this creates more media exposure for Harris, but it also rid runs the risk of her uh, flubbing or of having an, an unfortunate turn of phrase, which could go viral uh, in either a positive or a negative way. So what about Trump and all of this? What's he been up to? 
Well, he's refused the 60-minute interview that, uh, that Harris did uh, and podcasts like uh, Call Her Daddy. Uh, they say he refused their invitation. Trump has been mostly holding rallies rather than interviews and a traditional sort of buzzy media stuff. He is expected to do a, univer a Univision town hall. Uh, this is a move uh, like Harris to get out the Latino vote but it will be separate from Harris's. So even if the Trump's team has shied away uh, from the media blitz that she is now doing right now, uh, it still has some uh, strong tools. He does ha have some strong tools in his pocket. One of them is Elon Musk. Uh, and not only through his financial support or his control of Twitter, Musk spoke to Tucker Carlson uh, saying that he is, quote, all in on Trump and that if Trump loses, he's effed. Uh, that plus their discussion of, in my view, a very bad joke on assassinating Harris. Uh, they are the perfect ingredients to get people talking, and that is exactly what uh, both candidates want right now, and both are using more modern ways, like influencers, like social media, uh, to make sure that people are talking. And indeed, uh, more than uh, a number of podcasts in the mix as well. Thank you very much, Solange Mujan, for that.